All right, welcome back. Howdy ho. This is a review of Three Days of Gettysburg by GT Games. Uh, going to review the 0800 8 a.m. turn of July 2nd. Ah, the turnaround on this was pretty good. Um, I had to go through 70 activation markers. Um, quite something once you this game get starts going you got a lot of units to uh lots of divisions coming on the map um so what's happened since uh last turn well let's start at the bottom of the map uh we've got uh, hood's division um and elements of uh caldwell's division um from hancock's corps engaged uh down here on the southern end of the map um just um East of the Emmitsburg Road. A uh, little contact, a little disorder, nothing too major. Um, the main thing what Caldwell's division did was create a defensive perimeter so Hood can't make the swing around here um, and flank the uh, the, for the, um, the southern flank of the Union force, which is being somewhat uh, precariously defended by um, what the one of the good divisions left from Sickles Corps, and uh, that would be Birney's division. Uh, there's just a few few regiments left from Humphrey's Corps, which was pretty. I mean Humphrey, Humphrey's division, which was pretty beat up by uh, um, Pender's division, which is now um, trying to break back the line a little bit here. Uh, let's see. Coming the Confederate reinforcements, we've got. Elements of McClaw's division coming in here. They're making their way, looks like, to the front of the Devil's Den area. Probably going to try and assist Pender, who's pretty beat up, to try and punch through here. Uh, hard to say exactly um, what they're going to do. But I think that's where they're going to apply the pressure down here, because up here in the north, uh, things are getting very desperate for the, uh, the Union. Uh, as you can see, the Confederates have broken through top of cemetery hill parts of cemetery ridge have been have been um, uh, broken through as well you can see through the breastworks here uh, anderson's division has punched through um, and in the top it's just a complete mess uh, williams division part of a lot of the uh, 12th corps was completely annihilated as they were trying to defend culp's hill um, and you know, currently it's looking pretty bad. I think there's nine, um, combat ineffective divisions for the union and for a Confederate victory, uh, you only need, uh, 12, only 12. So this is going to be interesting for the rest of the game. Now, the good news for the union is we've got two divisions coming in here from, uh, Hancock's second Corps, which are rushing up to the front. Uh, we took some fatigue on uh, Gibbon's division here. Rushed all the way up into the fray trying to help bolster the line and, um, and knock the elements of Early's division, which had broken through to the front. Um, I think they'll have probably a pretty good shot at bolstering the line. Now, whether or not they can keep more of these Union divisions um, that are already so beat up from becoming combat and effective, that's going to be the, the tough part. Maybe perhaps they can... Um, they can somehow pull back and get into reserve before nightfall if the game even lasts into the night of, of July 2nd and possibly bring some of their units back who have been routed. Um, we also have Sykes 5th Corps who's uh, made their way through here and uh, they disposed, uh, or Buford, John Buford, who's left of his cavalry corps, disposed of the Confederate cavalry that were blocking this area. Um, we're able to chase them off. There's just one left here uh, that, that's blocking the, the road here, just in case the uh, Union decides to try and flank the Confederate forces. But uh, Sykes decided to rush his uh, divisions forward here, his brigades forward to, um, uh, that would be actually Ayer's division and uh, also um, Barnes' division rushing their way up here to stop elements of Johnson's division, the Confederate general, who's pushing his units far forward here, as you can see. They're almost to, uh, almost past the um, Baltimore Pike. Um, and there's just skeleton remains of of Howard's Corps here blocking him. I mean, it's it's pretty serious. So 
I think they're going to be able to stop them. Now, the question is, once the Confederates, um, you know, get get their units back in line here, I mean, look how many there are left here. I mean, it, um, it, it's amazing. And then you've got all this Confederate artillery. If they make it up here onto the onto the ridge, they're going to cause just major havoc to these Union troops down below. Of course, you know, a lot of things can still happen, and this is far from over. Um, but it, it's looking bad, you know, obviously, that when when something like this happens, A, historically, where the Confederates <laughs> break through the major Union defenses, uh, the chances of the Union being able to pull it off is uh, is going to be tough. Um, I, I don't even think the Confederates have a combat ineffective division yet. I don't believe they do. Um and unless the, the Union can cause some serious losses, which is possible, um, it, it's going to be tough to turn the tide. Uh, let's see if I've covered everything here. We do have the rest of, uh, of the Second Corps, Hancock's division, who will also move up here to help bolster the line. Um, and we got the rest of the Confederate Reserve Artillery moving up this way, possibly to try to blast the rest of... Uh, First Reynolds, First Corps here off the uh, ridge and just make it even worse. Uh, let's see. I'll give you a look at how bad it is for the, the Union forces. First of all, you take a look at the, the fatigue that a lot of these these units have taken. Not too bad. We just have Gibbons Corps, which are the guys that are rushing up to the front, are at fatigue one. Everyone's at usually the mostly just at the fatigue level zero. And the Confederates, about the same. Um, nothing too bad, uh, but if you take a look at the Union forces here, I mean they're just decimated, um, lots of losses and uh, lots of routed units. Hopefully they can get some of these units into reserve if they're lucky. It's going to be tough because um, you do need to get them out of line of sight, and I think it's uh, six X's away, which is going to be tough. <laughs> they have to stay that way the entire. Um, entire turn in order to start bringing guys back and it's getting so hairy up there I'm not sure if they're going to be able to, to handle that um, and let's see I think that's about it um, I did have one random event for the turn that was uh, a skedaddle and the confederate player was able to choose a um, cavalry brigade and have them removed from the game and I decided the confederates did not want to deal with that the Buford's horse artillery that had fresh units that had come in, and, and so they were re removed from the game. They're actually right over here. So they are out of the game. Some pretty strong guns. Um, and that's one thing. The Union's going to have to bring up all this reserve artillery that comes in later in the game, create some sort of line here, which is going to be tough with all these woods in order to knock blast the Confederates back. Uh, before we know it, the Confederates could have some of the important VP hexes, but they're going to have to take round, little round top and elements of Cemetery Ridge to do that. So it's not over, but uh, it's, uh, once again, we'll see what happens. All right, that's it for now, and I'll be back. Uh, hopefully I'll get this done in a couple days uh, to review the 9 a.m. turn. All right, see you later.